So, it's Friday evening. You got yourself a brand new gaming rig. You got your RGB set up. You got your mechanical keyboard. A 1 million DPI mouse ready. Your biodynamic gaming headset. And of course, a small beverage on the side. Everything to kick some virtual ass. So why worry about a dedicated sound card? My onboard codec is the bomb and you will not hear the difference anyways. Or will you? Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's hardware channel. Now today we're going to talk about sound cards and especially why you should get a sound card and which one you should ask for Christmas. It will get a bit technical, so bear with me till the end and I hope to see you there. So let's start off with the differences between a codec and a dedicated sound card. But first up, the codec. Well, a codec means to code and decode. And everything is done in this tiny little chip. I mean, there's the digital to analog converter, the headphone amp, everything is done within this tiny little chip. That has its advantages. I mean, everything is just in the tiny chip and it will fit on a motherboard. It won't take up a PCI Express slot and, well, it is cheap because it's already integrated into your motherboard. But there are also a lot of disadvantages into using the onboard solution. First off, the frequency response. There's always a bit of a wobbly uh, line if you check out Rightmark Audio Analyzer, which means that not every frequency will be as loud as, as it, it is intended to be. Difficult sentence. Also, there will be some problems with the signal to noise ratio. There will be a stereo crosstalk. Electromagnetic interference will be there. I mean, I'm the, well, my motherboard has a lot of EMI. So when I move my mouse or the, the hard drive starts to spin up, I can actually hear it like a hum or a buzz in my headset. There's a lot of power jitter going on because the power supplied to the sound card will not be as consistent as it is, needs to be. DTS and Dolby calculations will be mainly done by the CPU. There won't be a headphone amplifier, and if there is one, usually it will only power up to 30 ohms. In my opinion, the overall sound experience is uneventful, and when there are explosions, it will sound like a wet box being dropped. And when friends start to yell at you that you have to shoot some guy, well, it will sound like they're screaming at you on a megaphone. You will hear sometimes a constant echo, uh, it will be underpowered to some headsets when there is not a headphone amp present. Now if we move up to the sound card, of course you have to pay a price, which usually you can get a nice second-hand sound card from 40 euros and up. It will take up a PCI or PCI Express slot, but there, usually there is a more of a straight line in free, the frequency report on Rightmark Audio Analyzer and it won't have the cutoff at 20 kHz or it will be higher. The signal to noise ratio will be also a lot higher. So that means that if the signal and the noise that will always be present, well, the gap between them is a lot bigger. So you won't hear a constant noise. Usually there is no stereo crosstalk. If we take, for example, the AE5, it has two discrete amplifiers on there, one for the left, one for the right. So there won't be any crosstalk. If the sound card has uh, EMI shielding, there will be no EMI present. So you won't hear that buzz or hum when you move your mouse. Power supply will be can be done by an into the internal power supply of your computer. Usually it's SATA, Molex or those kind of things. There will be a headphone amp, which usually drives from 30. I have seen 150 ohms, 300 ohms, but also 600 ohms. And the overall sound experience, again, in my opinion, is a deep, deep, but not overpowering bass. It will be pleasant. It will, the highs will not be sharp. The ambient sounds are present and you will hear greater details in the music or in your game. The sampling rate and frequency response will be from 24 bits to 192 kilohertz, but there are some cards out there that will have 32 bits and 384 kilohertz. Now there is some discussion going on if that's uh, even useful because there aren't that many songs recorded with 32 bits. But in my opinion, you will hear a bit of a difference in, well, details, but 
I may be crazy. So even there's a big difference between onboard and a dedicated sound card, I can still hear you say, well, that's all very nice, but my sound card will still provide enough for me. Now, I can understand that those situations are there. If you buy a, well, run-of-the-mill regular headset for, say, about 50 euros, a better sound card will not provide you with enough or more quality than, well, than the onboard solution. I mean, also, the headphone is a big piece in the uh, in the puzzle now i've got a biodynamic mmx 300 which is a really good sound sound headset sorry for gaming and music uh, i haven't listened to that many films but still it's a very good headset now there are a lot of other headsets that are equally good um, uh, if you spend a bit more than 100 euros say 100 to 150 you can find excellent headsets that will provide you with additional quality of sound and so and when you have one of those a sorry a dedicated sound card is more than needed now, i'm not going to make a top three of sound cards which you should get why not well there are a lot of variables in there like price quality and everything in between um, so i'm just going to tell you which sound card you you could get and which ones you definitely shouldn't get now you should also when you are planning on getting a sound card check out online because there are a lot of great offers on there for a sound card and keep in mind that a sound card will never be overclocked or misused i hope so at least like a video card will which is almost always overclocked or a cpu will almost always get overclocked or a ram will always get overclocked so the lifespan of those components are a lot shorter than a sound card is. A sound card is a lot more sturdy than all of those components. Of course, there are exceptions. So if you get one that's terrible or whatever, don't look at me. I'm not the one responsible. But I always tend to look on the second-hand sides just to see if there's something that's really good. Also, check out the, the seller if he's, uh, well, a kind of good guy. If he sold something before, but I think you have all know what you should get and what you shouldn't get. Okay. What sound cards on the ASUS side, Creative side, and other branch should you get? And I have some other general things you should check out when getting a sound card, whether it's secondhand or new. Let's start with ASUS. So on the ASUS side of sound cards, well, the most important card in my opinion is the ASUS Xoner AE, which is an excellent card. I mean, it has an excellent digital to analog converter, which is from the ESS Sabre lineup. It has a dedicated op amp. It has EMI shielding. Uh, it has it, it, the, the driver interface is, is nice and comfortable and it has everything that you would want. I mean, it's just a really good card and it is really cheap. So if you're, well, sort of thinking about getting a new card, you should definitely check out that one. If you find one secondhand, get that one but otherwise it's still very cheap now asus also has a lot of other cards on sale that may be interesting to you i mean you have the raid strix pro you have the phoebus you have the ess and you have the se so which one of these cards should you get and which one should you get well if we start off with the asus xonar se i have a lot of requests to review that sound card but i have done some research on the sound card and uh, in my opinion, it's just a glorified onboard solution. The components on there are not that good, and there aren't that many components on there either. So it's just an onboard solution slapped on a PCI Express card, and that's it. So I'm not even going to review it because I think it's crap anyway. And if you're getting one, you should you could always use your onboard solution because there won't be any difference. If, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. But otherwise, don't get the Xoner SE. The Essence ST or STX, whereas the STX is the PCI Express version and the ST is the PCI version. Version. Those are really good cards. Uh, the sound quality is really good. It's shielded. It has a lot of inputs, outputs. It's more movie orientated, uh, HTPC orientated, but it's still a nice, decent card, which functions kind of good. If you're going to get one, make sure you get the STX because I think PCI is well long gone and your next computer won't be pci based anyway so don't get one of those 
Then you have the Rage Trix Pro, which is a really good sound card. I got the one with the uh, with the volume knob. I've already made a video about all these sound cards except the SE. Um, the, it has really nice with the external volume knob, really good sound quality. The uh, driver interface is nice. It's just a good card. If you can find it secondhand, get it. If you're planning on getting it new, uh, don't do it. Now the Phoebus, um, that card is one of the cards that I will not recommend. You know, although the sound quality is really good, it has nice components, it has shielding, external power supply, and everything that I would want in a sound card. But there is one drawback with that sound card, and it's a common one, and that's where the amplifiers of your headset will, will sort of break down, and you will have a huge chance that the left channel or the right channel will sound louder than the other. The chance of you getting that with a second hand card is really big. Um, maybe new you will, well, maybe able to use it for some time, but the risk is too great in my opinion, you, so you should get that one. Now, if we're going over to the creative side. Now, of course, Creative also has a huge lineup of sound cards. I mean, you have the AE5, the Z, the ZX, the ZXR, the RX, uh, all the X5 cards, uh, all those kind of cards. But I'm going to focus on, well, a shorter or a tinier collection. First off, it's the Sound Blaster Z. Now, this is a really nice sound card, and there are a lot of them on sale secondhand. I mean, I just checked out a secondhand website here in the Netherlands, which I do frequently visit to buy uh, sound cards to review. But it, I mean, in the list of 25 sound cards there that are on offer, about seven or eight are Sound Blaster Zs. But still, it is a really nice sound card and it has a light uh, red RGB LED in there. So <laughs> how can you go wrong? Now it has EMI shrouding. Um, it has dedicated good uh, components in there. The driver interface is nice and just the overall sound quality is really good, especially if you can get one second hand. Now, if you get the ZX, it's exactly the same as the Z, whereas the X only is the, well, external volume knob. So if you can find that one secondhand for a nice price, get it. Now, the ZXR is a totally different card than the Z and the ZX. Uh, extremely good components. Uh, it has everything that has external volume knob. I have the one I'm right in the back there, the box that says sound. It's a really good sound card. And... It's nice to get, but I think it's a bit too expensive and people who are selling it online secondhand ask way too much money for it and it's definitely not worth it if, you can, if you're going to get it new. Other sound cards, well, you have the Audigy RX or X5 or Audigy 5, which however you should call it. It was a nice card, but it is just a updated or an updated Audigy card in which in my opinion isn't worth the money. Now, last but certainly not least is the Sound Blaster X AE5. Now, not so long ago, the AE7 and the AE9 came out. Now, they are almost the same cards. They have almost the same components, but the AE5 is a really good sound card, especially if you're using a headset. If you have the money and you can find one second hand, get one. It is the best cards you can buy second hand. Don't skip it. Don't get anything else. Get that one. It's in my opinion, one of the best cards out there. Now, other brands that we have, let's head over there. Now, on a lot of secondhand sites, you can find brands like Sweeks, Club 3D, uh, ICIDU, Teratech. I mean, I have a Teratech card back there. Uh, all those kind of more, well, I wouldn't say obscure brands, but lesser known brands and they are usually very cheap cards. Those are generally just glorified onboard solution and you won't get any better sound of them. Although the boxes say it's crystal clear, whatever, uh, it isn't that good. Um, I've tested a lot of those cards and I've never been, well, I've never even been amazed or even say, ooh, that was nice. Well, it's nothing like that. So stay clear of those cards. There is one other brand that I would like to point out, and that is ESI, especially the X5 NRG, which is a PCI Express based card, which I did a review about a long time ago, but I am sort of fallen in love with that card. The drivers are only for Windows 7, but they will install on Windows 10. 
uh, but it's such a nice sound card. I mean, it looks good, and if you look at the results from Right Mark Audio Analyzer, it's um, it's just amazing. It's so if you find it online for a nice price, get it. It's just I, I think you will fall in love with it too. Now, as for something in general, uh, when getting a sound card, always try to avoid PCI-based card. I did a lot of reviews about PCI-based cards. I mean, the Autogies, x files all those kind of cards. But that was more of for the fun of it, because I wanted to find out how good these cards, in fact, were. Because a lot of people are saying, well, these cards are still the bomb. Well, in fact, they aren't. But stay clear of those. Always get a PCI-based, sorry, PCI Express-based cards. Because if you buy a future computer, you can always take your sound card with you. Also, last thing, when using an uh, sorry, a dedicated internal sound card, never use the front panel, people. It will distort your sound enormously. I'm planning on doing a video about it, how much distortion you can expect. But just in general, don't use your front panel because the distortion will be huge. It's from the EMI mainly. So, a lot of talking. Which cards, to summarize, which cards should you get and which ones shouldn't you get? There are just two cards with, uh, which I would hardly recommend. That's the uh, Xoner AE and that's the Sound Blaster Z. Those cards are just excellent cards and you cannot go wrong with them. So that's it for me for today. I hope you're all preparing your Christmas shopping lists and I hope to see you in the next video. See you then, bye bye.